Hi guys, I built this massive drone and in this video I will show you how I built it. Uh, the design is from aerospace engineer and YouTuber Tom Stanton. If you're, already, if you're not familiar with his work, go check out his channel, it's good stuff. Um, when I first saw this drone on Tom's videos, I just knew I, I had to have, have one myself because it's just big, it's badass and it has this you know, overwhelming use of carbon fiber. I just, I really needed it. And also it can lift quite heavy, heavy objects. Um, now, Tom does not sell kits for this drone. So if you want one, you need to build one uh, yourself completely from scratch. Tom is sharing his uh, design files. So at least that was a starting point. And um, besides regular uh, tools that you may have in your workshop, there are two very specific machines that you will need for you to be able to produce uh, this drone. The first one is a 3D printer. The second one is a CNC machine. I have a 3D printer. Actually, I've got two, both from Creality, great machines, um, but I don't have a CNC mill or a CNC machine. Um, but here I am sitting with the drone. So how did I do it? Well, now it's a good time to introduce the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay offers custom PCBs, CNC machining, 3D printing and other various manufacturing techniques. And they have sponsored the CNC cut carbon fiber parts, but also the 3D printed parts, which has made this build significantly easier. I just uploaded Tom's design file to their webpage, entered uh, the material I want the parts to produce in and how many I've needed of each. And then um, 10 days later, approximately FedEx Express knocked on my door and you know, they delivered a package with all the good stuff. Awesome. Um, and I'm very, very pleased and super satisfied with the quality they have produced the parts in and overall their service. But uh, let's rewind a bit and start this build from the top. Boom, here it is guys. The delivery from PCB way that I've been waiting for. And oh man, this is exciting. Let's open this. T-shirt, even my size, awesome. Oh, look at this. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look at this, look at this. Woo. <laughs> Oh yeah. And it is just solid. This is amazing quality, really, really nice quality. Now it's time to move on with the actual build. I decided to start with the props. First, I had to ream them from four millimeters to six millimeters. That was a lot um, to increase the holes width. And then I uh, mounted the top part and bottom part of these prop adapters. And they fit really well with the motors, which already has their uh, prop adapters bolted on. And they have these cutaways that fit with these, let's call them bulges, on the inside of the prop adapter part that goes onto the props. Then comes a washer and a nut and that's actually it when i um when i when i saw these motor mounts i quickly realized well i'm gonna have to be really precise on cutting these um these holes and um i figured i'm just gonna buy some pvc before i get started on the um, on the carbon fiber. i'm just gonna buy myself some some pvc tubes and practice in those and um, after a while, you know, I was pretty, pretty confident, figured out I'm going to nail this. I'm ready for the carbon fiber uh, because, you know, PVC was dirt cheap. Uh, the tube, carbon fiber tube was not, it was actually quite expensive. So um, I, um, I messed it up anyways, completely. I mean, look, look at this disaster. I ended up 
drilling multiple holes because the first ones were just, yeah, I messed it up. I thought I could do it just, you know, in hand, but I couldn't. So now I own a drill press, which or a bench uh, drill. Just the cheapest one they had in their local hardware store, but it's awesome and it does the job really well. The best thing about this tool is not the laser guide, it's actually the groove that I can position the carbon fiber tube into, or in this case the PVC, and along with the clamp on top, it's not gonna go anywhere. And this just means that I have perfect holes um, to the precision that I require. So this is very, very nice tool to have in my workshop. I actually did almost a full assembly of the drone just using the PVC pipes. And that was a good idea because that allowed me to test the length of the arms and the length of the legs before I cut into the expensive carbon fiber. And I think I nailed it pretty well. All right, so it's time that I mount the motors onto the arms and connect with the extension cables. So off camera, I prepared the extension wires that's gonna go inside the arms and solder on connectors on both the cables and the motors. As you can see here, it came out pretty nice. Then it was time to solder on the motor extension wires to the ESC. And I always struggle with soldering. I just never seem to really master it. And I did also manage to bridge two pads, pads but I also actually ended up fixing them. After wiring and mounting the RX, it was time to get ready to mount the the, the arms and the top plate. But I ran into a problem because my VTX input connector was being blocked by the black battery lead. So I had to desolder it and solder it back on at an angle so I could connect my VTX cable. Once that was completed, it was time to mount the legs. And as you can see here, I've added a lot of protective pads onto the table I'm working on simply because the drone was all over the place and bumping onto the, to the table. I didn't want to, to scratch it and, and damage anything. So that's why I'm using so many different pads that I could find. And then the build was complete, or at least I thought it was, because there was a big issue I really didn't like that I had to address. The problem was that the carbon fiber arm was touching the carbon fiber top plate here of the mainframe. And that just caused it to bend upwards, something that I really, really didn't like. So I decided to swap out the arm mounts for the other ones that I had included, where they are coming straight out away from the mainframe. And once that was swapped, the carbon fiber jumped back into its regular flat position. The build is complete. So I'm just going to give you a grand tour of all the stuff that's going on. First, I'm going to start with the RX. See if you can flip this. Yeah. So I have my RX and I've taped the antennas to the arms. And then I just stripped the, uh, the RX onto the bottom plate. And of course, wired it to the, to the flight controller. Um, then, Gonna turn it. Then I have my um, I have a DJI FPV camera. Just gonna take off the lens protector. Um, have it in a mount of my own design. And right next to it, on the other side, I have the air unit also in a mount of my my own design. The antennas are here, and I have the cable running right here, going under and then over and into the camera right there. Then I clearly have something that is not connected. And I'm not talking about the battery, I'm talking about this fella. This is actually the cable to the GPS. I have that here. This is the GPS and here's the GPS mount. Now. There's a reason why I haven't used it. That's because when I connected it to Betaflight, it was all acting up. It wasn't stable. Then I disconnected the GPS and everything was good. So maybe this is faulty. Maybe I'm missing some sort of setting. I don't know. 
Oh, sorry, here we go. Uh, so right now I've, I'm not using this. Um, it could go here. So that's what it was designed to, to be. So I think I need to figure out why that's going on because I'd like to have the GPS information uh, on screen. Um, but that's gonna be later. I have a battery strap so I can attach the battery. This fellow here, this is a 6S, um, 5000 milliamp hours, Gen -S, 45C, pretty good. It's gonna go right here. Just need to strap it down. I know Tom is doing uh, two packs, so he has a more flat, more evenly distributed load. Maybe that's why, I don't know. But it's, it's, this, it's still 6S I'm doing here. So um, yeah, nice battery. Um, talking about some of the changes that Tom's doing in his, in his, he's actually, he's got the same motors, but his props are slightly longer than these. I couldn't get them where I buy my props, but they are available, so I might upgrade at some point. This is just like half an inch or an inch shorter, just a bit like that. Um, then Tom is using iNav, I'm using Betaflight. Um, and if you, I'm not gonna go with Betaflight, it's very basic, very boring. What I've done, so if you're interested in knowing about Betaflight, go check out Joshua Bartwell's channel. He's the man when it comes to Betaflight. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna know about, about Betaflight. That's where I learned pretty much everything I know about it anyways. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm just gonna tuck this in, maybe strip it down, and um, I'm good to go. All right, first take off. Coming in a bit hot and flipped it. Yeah, and here's the same same shot. You can clearly see here that I'm coming in way too fast. I'm not stopping up enough before I flip it. I did kill the engines before it actually hit the ground. So I didn't break anything. Second attempt, taking off, giving a bit more uh, altitude. Before, before doing pretty much the same thing and just um, smashing it into the ground. But I again killed it. And here's the same shot, you can clearly see that I'm coming way too fast. On my third attempt, I was a bit more, um, bit more cautious and was very um, careful and gentle on the stick movements. So as you can see here, yep, it's, it's, it is possible. I just need to trim a couple of things and, and practice, and then it's definitely possible. I still flipped it though. On this attempt, I actually managed to do it. Awesome. So the drone is complete, it's functional. I do need to tune a couple of settings and practice my piloting skills, that's for sure. Um, but overall, I'm ready for, um, for adventures with this drone. And if you want to see how they uh, pan out, please stay tuned because I'm, be, I'm going to be putting this uh, drone and its heavy lift capabilities to good use. I've got some pretty awesome ideas I hope you might like. Anyways, this concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.